Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon everyone. How are you guys doing today? I hope you all in a good condition. Dear Ms. Susan Fabriantina, SPD, MPD, as lecturer business English 2. We are from Group 4. We would like to present our presentation about inviting guests or co-workers to eat out and how to accept or decline the invitation. Before we start, we would like to introduce ourselves. My name is Muris Sulistiawati and I'm here with my friends Adila Sekar Kinanti, Salwa Lamanda Yusuf, and Sarah Fatia Azahara. Please watch our presentation until the end and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Inviting guests or co-workers to eat out. Table of contents. The first one is theory or definition. The second, ways to invite guests or co-workers to eat out. Third, types of inviting someone and how to make invitation letter. for business lunch etiquette. Fifth, expression of inviting guests to eat out. Six, benefit inviting guests or co-workers to eat out. And the last one is example of inviting guests or co-workers to eat out. Next is theory or definition. An invitation is a request, a solicitation, or an attempt to get another person to join you at specific event. Inviting guests to eat out is a request to other person to join you eat out together. Sometimes, it's as simple as not seeing you eat alone a lot. You eat out at your desk and use your brick to serve the net. Maybe, consider having one day where you eat with co-workers. If you tend to plug through your to-do list while eating, schedule at least some time in the week to eat with another worker. Worker will be increases while they socialize a bit. And if workers have friends at work, they tend to be more engaged. Use the opportunity to get out to know other people in your organization. And the next material will be explained by Ardila Sparkinanti. Okay, uh, I will explain uh, types of invitation someone to eat out based on its function. The first one is personal informal invitation. A personal invitation letter to eat out is a letter of application to attend kinship events or family events. Usually, the informal invitation don't need any kind of formal guidelines because sometimes you just ask, ask your friends from work who have the same position as you in the office. And also, for mass informal invitation, it's best to invite your, your guests three to four weeks in advance. If you choose to invite your guests by phone, remind them again in writing two weeks before the gathering. The second is official formal invitation. For an offici official formal invitation, sometimes you invite them through letter and it and it must put some good lines. Because usually for formal invitation, you would invite your boss or someone who have higher position that than you. So you must put some good good lines or or formal invitation for business. In official invitation letters need to include the head of the letter, letter number and the purpose of purpose of the invitation. The name of the day, that time and place of the meeting must also be listed in full and clear so that the invite person or organization can attend in time. Next, I will explain how to write formal invitation letter. Based on types of invitation someone, there are two ways. The first is formal and informal. And this some why uh, and this some ways to write formal invitation letter. Step one is write the subject line. Your subject line should contain the essence of your letter. For instance, if you need to invite the parents of the graduate graduating batch of your high school, your subject line should look some sometime like invitation for the graduation ceremony of class of 2020. Step 2 is add your letter head. Letter head. This step is a must for when you're, you're writing a formal invitation. 
you just need to add your organization letterhead and at the very top of the letter. Letterhead symbolizes the prestige of your organization in a professional light. Step 3 is mention the sender's address. The first things that you need to mention right after adding your letterhead is the sender's address. This is also an extremely crucial step because this is address where the guests will send in their RSVP. Or is write the date. After mention the sender's address, you need to mention the date of sending out the invitation. On scheduling the date for invitation letter, you can mention the date in any format. The next material will be explained by Sarah Fatia Azhar. Okay, next, step 5. Mention the recipient's address. The next step is to mention the recipient's address along with writing their names. This step ensures that the recipients can be sure that it's them who been invited to the event. We're just kidding, obviously. Step 6. Include the salutation. Always begin your letter with a greeting. You may write, Dear Madam or Sir, if you don't know the recipient's name. If you don't know the name of the recipients, write down the, their first and the last name and add a salutation in front of it. For example, Dear Elizabeth Brown. And the salutation with a comma and skip a line. You must always try to find out the full of name of the individual that you're sending the letter. Step 7. Write the main body of the letter. You should always start your invitation letter with a good phrase. For example, we're pleased to come you. It would be pleasure for us if you could come. Writing phrase like this at the beginning of the letter demonstrate your respect and happiness towards inviting an individual to the event. After you writing that, specify the intent of the event clearly in the first paragraph itself. In the second paragraph, you must describe the event's purpose and why you believe it needs to, to be attended by the recipients. In addition to all of that, more information can be attached related to the event. Step 8. Include the closing and signature. Express your gratitude towards the recipients for considering your invitation. Mention that you're looking forward for seeing them at the event. In case you want to be recipients to confirm their presence via email or by filling in a form, indicate the deadline by which you expect them to confirm their presence. Step 9. Proof read your letter. Have a final look at the letter before you send it out. Make sure that the grammar is correct, the punctuation are okay, and that there are no spelling errors. Also, ensure that your text doesn't include incomplete sentence or jargon words. The next material will be explained by Murni. Okay. Uh, the next ways to invite guests or co-workers to eat out. There are four ways to invite guests or co-workers to eat out. The first one is sending the invitation. Send in your invitation to all of your co-workers. If you don't invite everyone in the apartment, other employees might feel excluded. However, you can discreetly invite only some of your colleagues if they have private mailbox. If you are inviting the entire office or department, you can hand deliver the invitation instead of mailing them. You can sometimes invite invitation, especially for casual dinner or when inviting co-workers that you know well and frequently socialize with outside of work. The second way is RSVP. Eliminate potential confusion by including a specific and clearly worded RSVP in the invitation. RSVP is needed especially if you make a formal invitation. 
This tells guests how and when to respond to the invitation. Mention if a spouse or guest is welcome. Also, tell invitees if they need to confirm their attendance or only reply if they can make it. If you must confirm the number of guests with the restaurant prior to the dinner, note this in the RSVP, so recipients know it's important to follow up. Include the deadline for the RSVP and the preferred method of response, such as calling, emailing, or sending an RSVP card. The third way is timing. Give invitees ample, ample time to respond. Send invitations two or four weeks in advance to avoid scheduling conflicts and to allow guests plenty of time to determine if they can attend. If you send invitation only a few days before the dinner, many of our guests may, al may, may already have plans. In many cases, just a few days' notice does not provide enough time for everyone to RSVP. Scheduling in advance indicates you respect your colleagues' time and that the dinner is an important event rather than a casual get-together. And the last way is instruction. Give detailed instruction in the invitation to prevent confusion and help invite this plan. Include the date and time of dinner, as well as the name and address of the restaurant. Consider adding direction of a map for guests not familiar with the establishment. Also, note the restaurant dress code and state the purpose for the gathering. For example, state that it's to celebrate another colleague's retirement or to discuss company business. The next material will be explained by Sawa Alamanda Yusuf. Oke, okay, the next material is business lunch etiquette. I think for a lot of people, the whole concept of taking a client out to a meal, or even worse perhaps, going out to a meal with the boss can be very intimidating. There are a whole host of issues that people will encounter, from how to interact with the server, which bread plate is theirs, which glass is theirs, that can prove really embarrassing if they do the wrong thing. So if you're out with your boss, you definitely don't want to break the bank. No matter how big the budget might be, you let the boss determine what should be spent on that meal. Pose an innocent question. I've never been to this restaurant before. The menu looks great. Do you have anything to recommend? And certainly the boss is not going to recommend something that's too expensive or that's going to break the budget. The reverse is true if you're with a client. So you never want the client to feel like he or she has to scrimp on what they order because you're So you want to make some suggestions to that client. Oh, I've been here before, I don't know if you have, but some of the things that I very much like. And you can suggest a range of items so that you're basically letting the client know, it's okay, you can order whatever you want, don't be afraid. With alcohol, of course, you really do want to be careful. I say everybody has a limit, I can't tell you what your limit is, but what I can tell you is that you should stop well short of it. Now, if the boss is having spaghetti or a really messy sandwich, Let him or her deal with the mess of that. I would stick to things, especially if you're not very practiced in the right way to hold your utensils, in something that doesn't require your hands and can easily be picked up with a fork when you're not looking like you've got food dribbling right now because that's not a picture anybody wants to look for. A few other basics, there's of course, which side is the bread? Which side is the wine? How do I know which one I'm supposed to grab? Very simply, if you take your fingers in your mind and you do this, I'm making a B and a D, okay? So that means that this is the bread and this is your drink. So that's a very simple rule that, you, again, if you can just kind of practice it when you're at home, don't do it when you're out with the boss. If you, if you start going like this, he's going to think you're a little nutty. But if you do it on your own at home and you can reinforce that, your bread always on the left, your drink is always on the right. The check. That gets a little bit uncomfortable too. So for those who are taking a client out, I advise leave your credit card with the restaurant when you arrive. So that way when the check comes, there's none of that fake, oh, well, let me own, oh, and here's Smith. 
the check arrives and it's already been processed against your credit card. You never pay cash for business. You're never whipping out singles and quarters. Again, it's not going to look professional. Versus the check arrives in the bill fold. It's already been run against your credit card. You just sign and you're done. If you're being taken out by the boss, it's just that. You are being taken out by the boss and you're not expected to chip it. You're not expected to pull out your credit card. That seems like you're trying to trump the boss. And that can be Uh, in modern society, this lunch can be very important to your success. You might invite a customer for lunch to sell a deal or a competitor might invite you out to discuss buying your company. How you eat and how you act during lunch will make a huge impression on people. Table manners exist because they make social situations more comfortable for everyone. Even if you run a fast-growing .com or have built a business and reputation by rejecting social norms, you still need to understand that a business lunch is a meeting, not a meal. Here are some tips to help you make a good impression at your next business lunch. First is dress appropriately. Wearing a business suit when everyone is dressed casually can be as comfortable as showing up in jeans and t-shirt when everyone else is dressed formally. If you're the host, offer your guests a subtle tip about appropriate attire. The restaurant is real casual, and I'm coming from home, so feel free to wear something comfortable. But that's not permission to wear torn jeans, smelly knickers, and dirty t-shirt. Remember, this is a meeting, not a party with the gang. The second is arrive early. Whether you invite someone to lunch or they invite you, plan to be standing inside the entrance about five minutes before the scheduled time. Whether a host or guest, if you're going to be late for any reason, call as soon as you realize you will, you will be delayed. That way, make the others won't worry that they had the wrong day or time or the wrong place. The third is make a good first impression. When you first meet, firmly shake hands and look people in the eye. A limp handshake and a mumble greeting with downcast eyes gives the impression you're either in app or uncomfortable, neither of which will help you. Some people scoff at such detail, but humans, like other animals, look for subtle signs that over insight into the characters of the people we meet. The fourth is put your phone away. Texting or answering calls is insulting to the people you are with. You may think it makes you look like a big shot that has not has to deal with all kinds of important issues, but it only makes you look inept and incapable of managing your life or business for the short time you are at lunch. The last is don't start eating until everyone is served. A business lunch or dinner isn't a competition for food. When you sit down, feel free to sip your water, but don't grab a roll or condiment and start wolfing it down. Assuming everyone's meal arrives at the same time, wait until the host starts to eat. The next material will be explained by Sarah. Okay, the next material is expression of inviting someone. Uh, the first one, for formal way, you can say, would you like to? You're invited to, I would very happy if, we would be delighted if you, would you care to, we would be pleased if you could, would you care to, do you have free time on Sunday 5 p.m. For informal way, you can say, why don't you come to, like to come to, come and join me to, shall we come to, you must come to. Hey Jane. Hi Kathy. Are you free on Saturday? Yes, why? Do you want to have a dinner party at my house? That would be great. What time will the party be done? You can come around 6 p.m. Okay, do you want me to bring something? You can bring some soft drink if you don't mind. Okay. Is there a dress code? Just casual clothes. Okay, I will see you on Saturday. See you. In the previous dialogue, we can listen to Jane who 
is speaking to Kathy. She said, Are you free on Saturday? And Kathy answered, Yes, why? Jen then continued by saying, Do you want to have a dinner party at my house? And Kathy answered, That would be great. What time will the party be done? And Jane answered by saying, You can come around 6 p.m. Afternoon, Miss. Good afternoon, Jerry. I would like to invite you to my birthday party next Saturday. Thank you for your kind invitation. I wish I could, but I'm afraid I have an important thing to do on that day. But thank you very much. Oh, that's okay, Miss. I hope your party will be fun. Thank you, Miss. In the previous dialogue, we can see that Jerry is talking to his teacher. He said, I would like to invite you to my birthday party next Saturday. And then the teacher answered by saying, Thank you for your kind invitation. I wish I could, but I'm afraid I have an important thing to do on that day. But thank you very much. And Jerry finally said, Oh, that's okay, miss. Next, benefits inviting guests or cowards to eat out. The first one to boost productivity. You shouldn't spend five straight hours sitting at your desk. A lack of movement and communication can cause a significant impact on your well-being at work. Make an effort to set aside at least 20 to 30 minutes to face time with a, with a colleague and eat lunch away from your desk. Health experts say it's okay to eat with cowards in the person if it's a small group and at least six foot distancing and can be maintained. Follow CDC guidelines and wash your hands often and before eating. The second one to build better relationship. It's important to maintain a culture of inclusiveness and trust and that require relationship within the workplace. When you eat lunch with your co-workers, in return you'll get a closer team. It's an effortless and natural team building exercise, but it's important you don't talk shop. Break down the barriers of work-related topics. Get to know your co-workers on personal level by learning about their interests outside of work like their family or big life events coming up. Number three, to support well-being improvement. When you step away from your deck, uh, inter interact with co-works and take a mental break, you're improving your well-being. Not only does lunch with co-works allow you to chat and catch up, it can encourage you to take time to eat your entire meal rather than scruff down snake between calls. Once a week, challenge yourself by preparing your meals ahead of time so that you can eat healthy during the work week. Take a chance to break away from your desk and get up and move. Even if you take your lunch to park and talk with a college, a new setting can be just the refresh you need to get through the busy afternoon number four it's a networking tool having a lunch buddy can also be an effective way to do some in-house networking with colleagues that holds true for maintaining friendly relationship with office peers and for making connection to colleagues in far-flung departments left up to our own device we end up having lunch with people who sit with us who are on the same teams as us, says Michael Soto, co-founder of Spark Collaboration, which introduced co-workers for one-on-one -on -one meetings to build relationships and learn about other areas of the company. The next material will be explained by Murni Sulistiawati. Okay, next, it's example dialogue of inviting guests to eat out. Would you like to get something to eat with me? Okay, when? 
At ten o'clock. Ten in the morning? No, at night. Sorry, that's too late. I usually go to bed around ten. Okay. How about one thirty? No, that's too early. I'll still be at work then. How about five? That's fine. Okay. See you then. All right. Bye. Jennifer, would you like to have dinner with me? Yes, that would be nice. When do you want to go? Is today okay? Sorry, I can't go today. How about tomorrow night? Okay. What time? Is nine all right? I think that's too late. Is six okay? Yes, that's good. Where would you like to go? The Italian restaurant on Fifth Street. Oh, I don't like that restaurant. I don't want to go there. How about the Korean restaurant next to it? Okay, I like that place. Hi, Mark. Hi. What are you planning to do today? I'm not sure yet. Would you like to have lunch with me? Yes. When? Is eleven thirty okay? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Can you say that again, please? I said eleven thirty. Oh, I'm busy then. Can we meet a little later? Okay. How about twelve thirty? Okay. Where? How about Bill's Seafood Restaurant? Oh, where is that? It's on Seventh Street. Okay, I'll meet you there. Next material will be explained by Salwa Alamanda. Uh, okay, the next is the example. Uh, 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 which means this letter is made to invite someone to attend an event and the event of this letter is a formal dinner which hosted by Jane Williams and the formal dinner will be held uh, on December 9, 2020 at 7 p.m. until 9 p.m. and also at the end of this letter there's a location where the formal dinner will be held Next material, uh, Okay, next we will talk about the second material and our second material is about how to accept or decline invitation. Table of contents. The first one is introduction. The second is expression of accepting or declining the invitation. The third, how to accept the invitation. The fourth, how to decline the invitation. And the last one is example dialogue, accepting or declining the invitation. The next material will be explained by Salwa Alamanda Yusuf. Okay, before we get into the material, I would like to give you some introduction. Uh, surely, uh, you have been invited uh, by your friends your neighbors or your co-workers uh, to attend their event. Do you know to partly accept and decline invitation in English? Would you feel comfortable saying maybe? It can be difficult to feel you are saying the right thing, especially when you have to say no or maybe. The good news is with just a few steps, you will be ready to accept and decline the invitation partly and confidently in English. You'll never have to worry about saying the right thing or finding the right words. Next is the expressions of accepting or declining the invitation in a formal way. First is for accepting. There are so many kind of expression that you can use to accept the invitation, such as that's very kind of you. We would like very much to. What a delightful idea with the greatest pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's delightful too. And for the declining the invitation, there are also so many kind of expression that you can use, such as I'm very sorry I don't. I don't think I can. I would like to, but I'm afraid I have. I already promised to. Thank you for asking, but I can. Uh, and last is unfortunately I can. 
and the next is for the in uh, informal way uh, for the accepting invitation uh, the expression used is I will or will that will be very nice okay I will be there I would like to love to come uh, all right and sure I'm coming and for the declining the invitation uh, they are sorry I can I would love to but I don't think I can I wish I could but sorry I'm very busy sorry maybe next time thank you but I can and the last is sorry I don't think I can. Uh, the next material will be explained by Sarah the next material is how to accept the invitation there are components of a letter to accept an invitation the first one appreciation for the invitation it wouldn't hurt to state this at the beginning of a letter to accept an invitation it would reassure the sender that the invitation is no impulsion on your schedule and that you value of the opportunity to attend a function and their efforts towards putting it together the second one the thoughts that inspired you to agree to the invitation the thoughts that are inspired you to agree to the invitation or proposal should be should also be expressed in the letter it is important to include these two as a pleasure to inviting party to read the third one is details of the event and duties you may agree to carry out to customize the letter even further you may include details of the event as well as the amount of contribution you agree to and what duties you might be assisting with upon approval uh, the next any needs that might ease your attendance whether you need address and direction to the venue it should be mentioned in your reply which accept the invite the invite and the last one is indication of how much it is your pleasure to attend express with transparency how much of a pleasure it is for you to attend or to be promoted and or finding growth from the situation the next material will be explained by Ardila. Okay, next, how to accept the invitation through phone or maybe meet in person. To clarify, to clarify the invitation sentence and respond, it can be seen from some of the following example. Hey, Salwa, I'm going to the bookstore. What to want to come? Of course, I of course I love the book. Next, how to decline the invitation? Do you struggle with how to decline an inv invitation without hurting someone, filing or causing conflict? Does it bother you to turn someone down? There are ways you can de decline any invitation if you, if you do it quite sincerely sincerity and etiquette and show respect for the person who sent it to you remember that this is an invitation not an order to be free of course the person wants you to go or they will don't have ask. however if you however if you have other plan or something else prevent you from attend the attend there is nothing wrong with decline. K is to like K is to let the person know whether or not you can accept the invitation as soon as possible and in a polite manner. The person who sent you the invitation will appreciate a quick response. For, for example, excuse me, Murni, I'm I'm having a graduation party in my house. Would you like to come? When is the event? Sorry, I don't think I can. The next material will be explained by Murni Sulistiawati. Okay, next. Here are some tips on how to turn down an invitation in the most polite way. First one, don't ignore the invitation. Putting the invitation aside to deal with later isn't good for you or the person who sent it. 
the host need to know whether or not you'll be there. Ignoring the invitation shows that you don't know manners, and you might be left off the guest list for the next party. Second is don't wait. As soon as you know you'll be unable to go, let the person know. Most events require planning and budgeting. The third is be thankful. Always sincerely thank the person for inviting you and let them know that you are honored that they think highly enough of you to send the invitation. The fourth is be honest. You don't ever have to come up with false excuses for why you were unable to go to the event, but you also don't have to go into detail. Let them know that you all already have plans that should be enough. Fifth is ask for a different time. If the invitation is exclusive to you, let the person know you are unable to make it at the time required. It. But you would love to get together at another time. This is obviously not an option if it's a group get together. Six. Don't over explain. If you can make it, keep your explanation short and to the point. Doing otherwise will make it sound like you are just trying to come up with excuses. And the last one is send something. If you would typically bring a gracious, gracious gift to whatever event you were invited to, go ahead and send something with a card attached. Mention something about wishing you could be there and add that you look forward to seeing them soon. This is the example dialogue of accepting or declining the invitation. Hi, Mary. How are you doing today? Hi, Eric. Pretty good. How about you? So far so good. Hey, Mary. I was wondering if you would like to come to a party on Friday night. Sure. I would love to come to your party. Wonderful. Do you know how to get to my house? If you would text me your address, that would help. Sure. No problem. Is there anyone you want to bring with you to the party? I would really like to bring my friends, Danny and Mika. Sure. Bring them along. Thank you. What time can we come over? We will have barbecue too. So, any time after 12 would be fine. Sounds like a fun party. I will call you before we leave our place. Sure. This is the example of conversation for declining an invitation. Hello Lina, would you like to attend a drum band practice? This afternoon? No, tomorrow afternoon. Thanks! As you know, we will be participating in a drum band festival next two months. That's why we have to intensify our practice. You're right. We'll prove that we are the best. Yes. Anyway, you will attend the practice, won't you? I'm sorry, I can't. My mother is hospitalized. I'm sorry to hear that. Okay, I will tell the leader about your absence. Hope your mother recovers soon. Okay, that's all from us. Thank you so much for your interest and attention. We hope you guys can learn from our materials and see you in the next video. Bye! Don't forget to like, comment,